very cold and um, uh, you can expect that uh, uh, for a country that is now having its winter uh, that arrived to a lot of snow so you can imagine how cold it is but though the weather is very very cold I must say that the hearts of the people in Romania are so warm they have been exceptionally kind hosts to our students. There are about 200 students who uh, had to escape the Russia-Ukraine conflict across the southern border and, uh, and, and seek refuge in Romania. The Romanians have been absolutely amazing in uh, extending uh, care, uh, volunteering uh, to assist them, uh, offering them lunch packs. I mean, your colleague journalists here, I mean, they, they, they do well to bring them uh, lunch packs. You have NGOs who are reaching out to them. The uh, Hello Hotel, where uh, Ghanaian uh, students are lodging, has been the center of a lot of you know humanitarian and assistance, uh, particularly from the Romanian. So cold weather, but uh, great people with a very warm heart. And uh, I, I have been impressed. Uh, I intend later on to make a statement on the floor in parliament uh, to celebrate the uh, Romanians for for how uh, amazing they have they have been. So. Uh, uh, these, 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 these have been my initial impressions uh, since arriving in uh, Bucharest uh, yesterday. Uh, uh, one of the person you praise highly is Ahmed Tijani Abubakar, uh, who you say is with, with the diplomatic mission in Prague, Ghana's diplomatic mission in Prague. How, how, how far has he been? Oh, he's been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, a lot of students I've interacted with tell me that. Um, He's the only person who uh, they have met or they have known from our embassy uh, since uh, this uh, matter uh, uh, occurred. Uh, uh, he has been the only one here. You know, we don't have an embassy in Romania. However, our embassy in Prague, uh, Czech, has concurrent responsibility. So they are in charge of uh, uh, Romania, Moldova, and uh, uh, light countries. So um, he is the only embassy official. And as I said in my uh, in my engagements uh, yesterday uh, with with the students, uh, he deserves uh, a very special uh, praise. He is the one who rushed here, made hotel arrangements, and he has been, you know, uh, receiving the calls and. Uh, reaching out to the border points and helping them to come in uh, when they cross the border. So, uh, one man commando, you may want to call him, uh, Tijani has been a very exceptional consular officer, and uh, he deserves he deserves uh, a lot of a lot of praise. I I met him uh, many years ago when he was posted to Abuja, Nigeria. I didn't know that he was now in Europe. And um, uh, I, I, I'm really impressed to see how experienced he's become, how skillful, and and the, the, the extent of dexterity and professionalism that he has uh, brought to bear for only one man. I mean, later on, I'm sure that when we meet at the level of the Foreign Affairs Committee to review uh, the response, uh, I'll be asking questions as to why only one man was sent uh, to Romania uh, when uh, we have so many students pouring in. And this has been, uh, if you like, <clears throat> the epicenter of uh, uh, Ghanaian students uh, escaping to Romania. Uh, he's Saka. operating a loop. So, yes, yes, he's the, he's the only one here. And uh, I think that that is, that is too much, too much uh, burden, too much pressure. Uh, on on one man uh, in in Romania, so uh, it's good I have come to see this. It's one of the uh, matters I will raise uh, when we meet the foreign ministry as a committee uh, uh, later. There's a meeting scheduled sometime tomorrow. 
I hope I'm able to make it down for that meeting. But I will certainly uh, raise this matter of, of concern. But that is not to take anything away from him as a person. I just think that um, he's under enormous pressure. I mean, it's, it's so much pressure for one person uh, in in the midst of all of this beehive of activity, all the you know humanitarian crisis, the various aspects. Because you see, uh, it's not only about uh, receiving people at the border. You have to uh, help them to their hotels, make sure they are settled. Then there are uh, uh, those who may have to see a doctor, who may have to go to hospital. Then you have. Uh, the ticketing issues. How do you secure their tickets? Before you secure their tickets, you must make sure they have valid passports and then uh, negotiate with the airlines and then um, uh, have a scheduled uh, uh, departure uh, program uh, for the students. So you, you can just imagine all of this work. That's a uh, lot of work for one man. And, and a lot of work, a lot of work for one man. And that is why uh, I singled him out uh, for for praise in in my post uh, last night. Uh, I've really uh, been impressed uh, with uh, how he has managed all of this. But clearly, it's not the best. Uh, I mean, uh, as a country, we should we should do better. Uh, yes, I know that Europe is stretched. There are other um, uh, other uh, uh, border crossing points. There, there you have. Ghanaian students who have crossed into Poland, some have crossed into Slovakia, some have crossed into Czech, uh, others have crossed into into Hungary. Uh, but um, uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, to have only one person in Romania, particularly where you have the the, the highest numbers, I, I don't think that uh, this is the best deployment. Uh, we could do. We are not being efficient, and we are not being fair to the to the young man uh, Tijani. Uh, but but isn't that uh, because one of the things you're also thinking about is the assessment that went into making that decision at this time? Uh, do you get a sense that perhaps those who are in charge of the Czech embassy do not understand or have not been able to as yet make a proper assessment of the kind of work they have to do? In this situation, that 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 may be possible. Uh, it 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 sounds like a plausible um, uh, uh, reason, but I do not want to uh, think them. I do not want to hazard a guess. Um, I I think that we would need to do a review, and um, and and make sure that lessons are, are learned. And and as a country, we also need to have uh, a well laid out you know uh, disaster uh, response strategy for our various uh, embassies uh, well ingrained within our foreign policy uh, interests when when uh, there are disasters uh, how do we respond when do we evacuate uh, which particular missions you know uh, take over. Can there be some uh, quick realignment where people can be posted from even uh, other continents or from Accra, you know, to to, to assist? It, it, it looks like the, we don't seem to have a plan and a policy for these things. So when when a disaster strikes or when there is an emergency, you get the impression that. There is a lot of knee-jerk reaction. We are just firefighting, and uh, we don't seem to have uh, a blueprint that is being followed. So uh, it's, it's, it's one of the recommendations that I intend to make strongly. I'm glad that uh, uh, God has been good, and uh, I've had safe passage uh, to Romania to see all of these things uh, for myself. And, and, and it, it, it shows why uh, these, these uh, trips are important, particularly for ranking members, so that you don't become just an armchair uh, uh, MP responsible for oversight. In carrying out your oversight, you have been to the ground, so you have seen things for yourself, 
and you know exactly what you are talking about. So it's not just about receiving reports or following media accounts or reportage, uh, but you have been there yourself, you have had direct assessment, you have interacted with the key persons, the key actors on the ground. And so when you are carrying out your oversight, which is your constitutional responsibility, you can uh, serve the country better and you can push the right, you know, uh, angles, uh, press the right buttons so that uh, things will improve. So that uh, when these matters recur, another time that there is uh, an international crisis or a disaster or a tragedy uh, or it's, it's a pandemic and there has to be some emergency response, we, we will do better as, as a country. So it, it's been an eye opener. I am really glad that I was able to make the trip and, uh, and, and I, I also have enjoyed the free um, interaction, the no holds bad interaction and how um, our people, our compatriots have opened up. I mean, for example, Sena, if you hear what our students have gone through, look, they had to pack their buses uh, about three hours of walk uh, to uh, the border. And if they tell you what they went through, the reports about racism is very true. I have now listened to them. I have seen the scars of it. I've seen videos of it. Um, and again, uh, questions arise as to uh, how we could have at the bilateral level been a bit more proactive to have some arrangement with the border control people uh, because they tell me that the Indians seem to have done that. So Indians were being prioritized. They were always asked to because they were in touch with their uh, uh, government officials or consular officers. Uh, so there are lessons to be learned there uh, as well. And then when they, they, they finally managed to cross after all the ordeal, the trauma, all the, um, uh, it, it, they, they credit the Romanians a lot. The Romanians were those who had set up tents, warm clothing, they had come with packed food, and it was the Romanians who held them, some of them for two days, three days, um, until um, Tijani and I have made arrangements and then they were uh, uh, ferried into the capital, uh, Bucharest, where uh, they were offered hotel accommodation at the at the Hell Hotel. So, um, and, 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 and honorable, uh, not, not, not to and break into to your uh, thought pattern, but uh, that is where I was a little concerned when you say you talk about racism because you're talking about uh, the spirit, the, the 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 good faith the Romanians have shown, and then you're talking about racism. Racism from whom, if not from the Romanians? No, uh, the racism is on the Ukrainian side. When when they were when they were trying to cross the Ukrainian border to get out of Ukraine. Uh, so, so unfortunately, the accusation stands leveled against the Ukrainians. Uh, of course, we sympathize with what they are going through, what the, the destruction at the hands of the Russians and all of that. But uh, their officers at the border did not do their country uh, any good. And uh, you have seen the statements that the Africa Union has issued. Uh, the United Nations have also just put out the report. They have done their independent assessment and they confirmed, the UN has confirmed that there was a lot of racism and, uh, and, 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 and a violation of human rights at, at, at the border. So it's the, it's the Ukrainian side of, uh, the, of, of, of the movement. But when they had crossed the Ukrainian border into Romania, the Romanians, uh, you know, have been totally uh, different. Uh, their reception was uh, so humane; uh, it was exceptional, and they, they they continue to shower praises on, on the Romanians. So uh, we 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 need to um, do the distinction 
So the uh, accusations of racism uh, is on the Ukrainian side. Uh, but when they had crossed the southern border of Ukraine and entered Romania, uh, the Romanians uh, offered a totally different reception. And you said that you had to work with Tijani to secure a hotel from him. Does that mean that you've not only been in, Boca, uh, in Bucharest, you've also been at the border pools where they are entering which are which places have you been to and what are you also observing aside uh the, the what you're listening to and watching people uh, when i arrived the uh, hotel arrangements had been made uh tijani had made those those arrangements in bucharest so um the students had been ferried uh from the border points, there were three border crossing points, and they had been ferried. There were some of the students who were uh, 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 so fortunate, they couldn't believe it. Uh, a number of you, great, um, Romanian volunteers, pardon me, uh, had driven all the way with the, uh, their own vehicles. And it's, it's, it's about a 10 hour drive, can you imagine? 10 hour drive. And these, Ukra these Romanians had had taken leave from work and had had come with their own vehicles to drive them uh, to into the capital, and so I have been at the Hello uh, Hotel uh, to assess their living conditions and all of that. And then um, after that, I hosted them to lunch. Uh, there is this. Is this uh, Euro Hotel not too far away from where they are, about uh, a 10 minute walk? And uh, uh, that, that is uh, a, a more superior hotel, a more superior facility. So I just thought that uh, we should give the students um, uh, a nice treat, uh, something different, something out of, you know, because where they are, I think it's a one star. Uh, or two-star hotel, a bit lower, uh, but you know they appreciate it. Uh, of course, when you are coming uh, from out of a war situation, you've left even your 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 personal effects, your gadgets, and uh, I mean some of them didn't take anything, not even their laptops. They just you know, it's, it's because it's about life, life first, you know. Uh, so uh, I hosted them to lunch. Um, uh, at the Euro Hotel, where they could uh, at least um, uh, have something uh, different and something nicer and, and warm uh, to consume, and and there we uh, we did interact. And listening to them carefully, I noticed that one, they are concerned about how quickly they can be evacuated out of here uh, to Ghana. Seventeen of their colleagues have uh, been evacuated, but the about 150 remain. Uh, so we assured them that looking at the security arrangements that uh, uh, Tijani spearheaded, he secured Qatar Airways for them uh, for Friday and then Sunday. Uh, so we anticipate that by Monday, uh, all of them should be in Ghana. Uh, they are also concerned about the, uh, their studies. Some of the my final year, six years, some of them, their fifth year, have done four years, and they are concerned about all these uh, investments because U Ukrainian school fees are not cheap at all. It's very expensive. And you know, international students' classification already puts you in a very, you know, high, high, high paying, you know, category. So um, I, I did assure them that uh, we will explore. Uh, bilateral arrangements, probably so they can finish their courses online. Uh, I'm sure that if we reach out to, to the Ministry of Education in Ukraine uh, using bilateral channels, bilateral diplomatic channels, that can be uh, achieved. Uh, also, uh, whilst I was with them, I got good news from the Bulgarian ambassador who reached out to me from uh, uh, from Bulgaria, uh, that their government has just decided that all the students living in Ukraine, if they are so minded, they can take up an offer which they are making, where they can come to Bulgaria and finish their courses. Um, 
any time that day. So that is if the the war continues in Ukraine for a long time, or the recovery process uh, becomes exactly, exactly. So they were happy to hear uh, that good news, and uh, uh, I, I think that eventually uh, tempests were calm. Uh, but you know, it's clear to me that these are students who have been uh, heavily traumatized. They have gone through so much, and uh, I hope that when they return, uh, parents will, uh, will 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 encourage them seeing psychologists, you know, uh, to assist them because it's not always about just physical injury. Yes, they may uh, on the outside be looking uh, very nice and uh, uh, on skate, uh, but you. You you have to you have to go beyond that and and when you interact with them when they tell you how they were crying and wailing and some of them just thought that you know all hope was lost they wouldn't make it uh, they, they should tell you that you know uh, as they themselves said these are memories that are forever etched and uh, it's going to be very difficult for the scar to be uh, erased so they will require some psychological assistance. Uh, when, when, when they return. But for now, they are in a, in a good place. The Romanians are doing a good job. Um, uh, they, they are safe in their hotel, and uh, uh, I'll be meeting with them again later today. Uh, and, uh, and and I'm sure that um, uh, they, they, they will continue to be grateful for the bipartisan support and how our country has rallied because they they say they follow social media and all that they see the prayers interestingly yesterday when i arrived at the hotel they were doing this uh, uh general prayer um uh meeting and and all of them had joined uh, uh via zoom and they were praying particularly for their colleagues who are still stuck in ukraine as we speak uh there are quite a number of uh, students. We anticipate that between 100 and 200 Ghanaian students are stuck in Sumi and Kharkiv, uh, these two cities, Sumi and then Kharkiv. So um, they are- Two cities, 100 to 200. Yes, 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 uh, yes uh, because uh, there are in, in in, in in Sumi alone, okay. there are 93. They are leader, they are leader the Remontando, uh, tells me that there are 93 of them. He's he's documented 93 names. They are in touch, uh, who are who are stuck in in Sumi. Yesterday, I saw an official statement from the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Ukraine, uh, calling on the international community to uh, get uh, the Russians and the the Ukrainians to agree to some ceasefire so that a safe passage will be created for the students who are caught up in the crossfire in, in Sumi uh, to get out of there. Because any attempt to leave, uh, you'll be caught up in the, in the crossfire uh, unless the two warring factions are told that it's within these hours, nobody uh, should fire. It's a ceasefire. So um, students are being evacuated. So that's the campaign the, the foreign ministry of Ukraine is, is, is canvassing now. And I think it's a good call. So as we, as we, we pay attention to those who are now in these European uh, capitals from uh, Bucharest to Budapest, we should remember that we still have our compatriots in Ukraine, in Kharkiv and Sumi, and we should uh, be really thinking hard and fast about about how we get them out of harm's way. Uh, what is special? Have they told you what is what makes it difficult uh, for people who are currently in, you say, Kharkiv and Sumi to get out? Is it the the extent of the insurgency there or the, uh, the the war that is going on there or they are too close to the russian border i, I think what's making it very difficult from what they tell me is that 
apart from the fact that Sumi is very close to the Russian border, um, they have the Russian soldiers. I think it's one of the first cities that they surrounded, and they are they are claiming control over over that city, and it's also become a launch pad because they've taken control. They are they are launching a lot of the attacks uh, from Sumi. So that is what has made it very, very, very difficult, very, very difficult uh, for them. There's one group which you mentioned, and yesterday I had a conversation with, um, I think, the president of Nukes in Ukraine, and he speaks about how they've had to fund the evacuation from their own resources. You said you had to make a, make a modest uh, donation to them. What are they telling you about how they be, they've been able to pull this off? At least get this number of students. 200 is no small number under this circumstance. To Romania alone, you are not talking about the ones in Poland and in other countries. What have they been telling you? Nukes Ukraine. Uh, my my brother, Senna, the Nukes executive have been phenomenal. Um, Philip Bobier and Sai and his team have told them that, you know, uh, when when the dust settles, I mean, they deserve a national award. Um, it's it's really for their proactive, their superior planning, uh, how they managed to quickly secure buses and to be and to and to be headed to the borders. That is how come we have a good number of students who are in these uh, European capitals. So the students have done very very well, and it's on. Uh, we had to rely on their. Uh, their dues, and apart, apparently they also had a scheme where they were assisting students whose uh, passports uh, and visas expire. They, uh, they they charge a little fee to facilitate the renewal. So that is what helped them to raise about three thousand dollars in their account, and that's what they used. Uh, they used they used they used the three thousand dollars to to pay for bus rights uh, uh, out of, of Ukraine. Uh, so they, they deserve a lot of commendation. Now, um, all of that money has run out because they say that the last uh, payment they had to do in Hungary uh, to pay for uh, the bus route from the uh, Ukrainian-Hungarian border into Budapest, into the capital. And so they have totally, they've totally run out. So they started some GoFundMe, uh, hoping that uh, uh, the general public who are touched uh, uh, with the applied will contribute. Uh, so um, I, 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 I also decided to, to contribute uh, my modest, modest donation of uh, 1,000 uh, United States dollars um, to, to at least. Uh, 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 replace what what they have lost, and so they can have something in their accounts because uh, it wouldn't be good to to continue to have a zero account. Anything can happen. There can be an emergency at any time. And considering how supportive they have been, they will be really incapacitated without funds. If they do not have money, uh, they will not be able to respond to any emergency. So I'm hoping that a lot more Ghanaians will. Uh, look out for the uh, GoFundMe campaign and, and support them. Uh, and I'm hoping that uh, when we are done, you can at least get us some details and send to my producer so that we can announce it. Because a lot of people who are watching us are people who live outside this country and uh, they understand the GoFundMe a bit better. Um, so we'll, we'll get there. But sure, sure. I, I also sure, wanted to ask you. Me. I also wanted to ask you. Whether there's a story from everything you've heard that stuck with you? Oh yes, yes, yes. A number of them. Um, in a in a short while, I'll even be celebrating a young lady uh, on my social media uh, pages. Uh, she's called Mame Akosia, and uh, um, um, they, they, I mean, I mean, great stories about her courage. Um, she crosses the border. And then she realizes that some of her colleagues, particularly females, are stuck across the border. And she will go back to fetch them. You know, she will go back. She will go back to fetch them. You know, a situation. I mean, when men were tired and exhausted, and you know, 
and everybody had become, you know, my survival first, each man for himself, God for us all. She was the only lady who could cross him back. Can you imagine what you are running away from? You finally managed after 24 hours to cross the border into Romania. And then you discover that some of your classmates are being left behind. And you don't just shout, but you go back there to help those who were just, you know, uh, 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 worn out, famished, and were, had no energy left. She just went in to physically carry them. And, and she's not that well built or somebody you say is, you know, so, you know, you know, uh, having a lot of muscles. So that particular story, Mami Akosia's uh, story, uh, was 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 uh, really inspiring to hear. Uh, and then um, there are there are also other stories of the Romanians, uh, those who uh, came to pick them and and drove them out all the way about ten hours. Uh, a gentleman called Francis of uh, who is from Ashaiman, uh, he he got such a a beautiful ride. He he's always talking about it. And Francis says he really wants to look for that family to go thank them. And, and and believe it or not, the family was ready to move out to stay in a hotel so that they would just give up their 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 uh, accommodation. Yes, their house uh, for uh, Ghanaian students. So that was another story, uh, Francis's story and Francis's special ride into uh, Bucharest that stuck with me. Uh, then certainly I've already talked about, you know, the the Nukes presence, uh, Nukes Ukraine presence, uh, leadership skills. He's so highly respected by his colleagues. He's won their trust and all of them are saying they are proud. They voted for him. Um, I think that he's one of the people you should look out for to interview when, when they come down. And guess what? Uh, he has decided that until the last person is evacuated to Ghana, he's not going to live here. Think about that. Think about that. That's that, until the that, last that person is evacuated to Ghana. Yes, yes, he is not. He's not going to leave R Romania. That that is so Philip's. Discussing that, that's what that, Philip's plan to do. Yeah, that's that's Philip. Yes, 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 and that's also. He hasn't given out his passport. He doesn't have any ticket. He hasn't. He he hasn't. He he hasn't at all. He hasn't at all. And and these are. Uh, Amazing, amazing, amazing stories. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so touched by uh, the kind of, you know, spirit that is young people. Uh, so I have a lot of hope in the future of our country, you know, that all is not lost. I mean, these, these are great guys. I pray they don't get corrupted and um, they, they continue with this spirit all the way uh, into maturity and into international leadership. Our country will be better for it. Uh, I'm really, really impressed uh, by some of the stories that I've, I've, I've come to see at first hand. What do we need to do at this time? Because you talked a bit earlier about whether or not, uh, about perhaps maybe if we have um, diplomatic uh, channels being opened, talking to some of these countries to see what can be done immediately. What do we need? Do we need... A foreign ministry or a foreign minister on the ground we need a bit more engagement with some of these countries to see what can be done because even those close to the russian border i know the, the tendency not to go into russia but we do have a russian ambassador and so uh, do we need to consider all those options to see how we can secure lies you see at this point in time my brother every card must be on the table we should not we should not rule out any option that will bring salvation to our people why do i say that it's a very fluid situation things keep changing uh, so if you don't keep an eye and you don't have every option on the table and you don't position your people strategically because as we speak now if this campaign by the foreign ministry of Ukraine works and they say, okay, we are agreeing to a narrow passage, say we're giving you six hours or 24 hours, 
uh, evacuate. Are we ready for that? Are our buses ready? Have we made the logistical arrangements? But when that, you know, ceasefire and, um, uh, I mean, safe passage is created, we will be ready. Because if not, we will just be bystanders and we'll miss that, 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 that opportunity. Um, so things like that, uh, even for our students in Russia, are we sure that we should keep them there? I mean, if you look at the sanctions, I know it is hitting hard. And how now even students cannot access their ATMs. It's even once the Russia has been cut off from the financial system, those who are on government scholarship, it will be difficult to, to you know, release their funds. And if family members will find it difficult to reach out to them. Uh, shouldn't we be advising them to leave, especially as uh, a lot of, because of the tit for tat sanctions, a lot of airlines are no longer operating, you know, uh, uh, within Russian airspace. So shouldn't we be more proactive and uh, get uh, our students out of harm's way so that if matters degenerate, there's a lot of prediction, a lot of talk about uh, uh, Third World War and how, you know, uh, Russia itself might not, you know, uh, uh, escape entirely uh, from the ongoing conflict. So that's why I say that at this point, you need a lot of far-reaching, deep strategic thinking. All cards should be on the table. And at the heart of it should be the, the preservation of human lives. Let's make no mistake. Um, Indian students have, have died in this. Indian students, at least two Indian students. And uh, one of the Ghanaian students I was interacting with yesterday, one, she knew one of the Indian students very, very well. So how do we avoid situations like that? God forbid we don't want any Ghanaian student or Ghanaian national to add to the casualty numbers. So it has to be an all hands on deck, all strategies, you know, uh, on the table kind of arrangement. Well, it's wonderful to speak to you this morning. Uh, but the question uh, everybody here keeps asking, and it's a question that has been on my mind, is um, are you there on the ticket of the committee or you are there on your own? <laughs> very good question. Very good question. I saw uh, a number of social media posts, people asking, uh, didn't he also go with a, fly, uh, a, a private jet? And, um, uh, is he going to account to Ghanaians how much the taxpayer is spending? <laughs> because of my recent campaigns about the cost of uh, presidential travels and Ajua Safo's uh, private jet and all of that, <clears throat> I see our friends on the other side are really uh, in a hurry uh, uh, to get one on me. Uh, but l l l l let me state, uh, Sana, for the avoidance of doubt that my trip, this trip, is not at the expense of the Ghanaian taxpayer. I am using uh, uh, personal resources, uh, and I reached out to a few friends. <clears throat> so everything I'm doing here, I mean, the lunch I provided for about 150 students yesterday, their donation to the welfare fund, my air ticket, and other donations that I intend to keep private uh, because uh, uh, we must respect um, people's privacy. Um, it's all it's all, all personal resources. So um, I didn't I didn't ask for money from Parliament, the Parliament of Ghana. Not that I wouldn't have been entitled. I'm sure that uh, I would have been entitled if I sent a memo to the Speaker. Uh, but uh, normally that takes time, the bureaucracy and all of that. Uh, I, I didn't. I I I. I, I not only didn't have the pleasure of time, I also thought that this is something that uh, we can do on our own at the individual level. And it's a humanitarian crisis. Uh, others who are not even, you know, Ukrainians or or, or, or Ghanaians are, are assisting. So why can't we also uh, help? So uh, please let all your uh, listeners and viewers across the globe know that uh, this has not come at any cost to the taxpayer. It's, it's, it's personal resources. So it's typical Samuel Okuja Tabla. You must be on the ground and you ended up there. 
if you uh, if you put it that way <laughs> you are the boss i have no choice <laughs> Well, uh, there are those who wants me to ask you several other questions, but I think this is enough for now. And I'm grateful to you for speaking to us. I'm guessing the Nooks executive may have been excited to see you, judging from the fact that you also served as Nooks president at some point in oh, your absolutely, life. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you know, yeah, absolutely. You know, I surprised them. I only asked for their address, and they were wondering. They thought that maybe I just want to probably as our embassy officials to keep an eye on, on them and all of that. They didn't uh, know that they would be seeing me. I kept it as a surprise to them. And you should have heard the screams and the jubilation and the jumping and chanting, you know, when, when they saw me at the reception of Hello Hotel yesterday. So it's, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun and uh, uh, a really, a really um, a heartwarming and, uh, and an inspirational moment.